This is something that happened fairly recently, and I don't have an answer for it. I can't come up with any easy explanation, but I'm hoping someone else out there might be able to explain what I experienced. It was the second week of deer season, and I was up, I had my coffee, and I was ready to go. I took my morning medications, and I was set for the morning. I cocked my crossbow, and I headed to the run. It was 5 a.m., and the sky was clear, and the air was brisk. The trail cam had shown me that the bucks would visit, along with the raccoons, mink, and other small critters. It was going to be a good day, I thought. As I was sitting in the dark blind, I began to feel very strange, very odd and uneasy. After checking my equipment, I suddenly became very aware of the deafening silence around me. There was no wind, and the sound of the deer mouse that lived under my blind was eerily absent. Even the birds had stopped their chirping and screeching. It was absolute silence. And then it happened. A sound. A sound that both puzzled me and terrified me all at once. I leaned forward trying to understand and identify this new sound, but nothing came to my mind. Well, one thing did come to mind, but I almost had to chuckle at the mere thought of it. Yet there it was. What sound, you ask? Well, all I can acquaint it to is the sound of the creature from the Predator movie. The only sounds to pop out of the silence were the sounds of these clusters of clicking sounds that seemed to dance on the air and rise and fall in an odd cadence. My mind ran over all the sounds of woodpeckers, raccoons, and all the other small creatures that I could imagine, but none of them matched the sound that I was hearing. I couldn't think of anything in nature that quite sounded like this. As the sun began to rise, there was still this disturbing silence. Nothing moved. The trail cams had shown the times almost like clockwork when the deer would make their rounds, so I waited. And I waited. Yet they never did show up. In fact, nothing did. Five hours passed and not so much as a bird appeared at the feed pile. The only sound were those clusters of clicks. And still, throughout all that time, nothing moved. Then, out of the blue, I heard a sharp crack. It came from around my 12 o'clock position. And that's when I saw this tree, about two inches in diameter, suddenly bend and then break, right about three feet up from the ground. There was nothing around it. It just bent and broke. I didn't see any unusual light. There was no shimmering. There were no animals or other beings. There was no reason whatsoever for this tree to bend and then break the way that it did. Well, I quickly packed up and went back to camp after this. The funny thing is, we never saw another deer in that area the rest of the week. Not on the trail cams, no tracks even. And this is an area that was full of deer before this happened. I don't know of anything in nature that sounds like what I heard. And whatever pushed over and broke that tree was never seen. Yet I sat and I watched that tree bend, and I saw it break. Well, this is what I experienced, and this was in northern Ontario, by the way. I still wonder what could have made those clicking sounds and cracked that tree. Signed, J. Hi, it's Jill here again. And this time I'd like to tell you about my portal experience that happened in 2022, two days after the summer solstice. I enjoy hiking and spending time going out in nature for the spring and fall equinox or the summer or winter solstice. This experience happened in the Anthony Lakes area in the Elkhorn Mountains in Eastern Oregon. I parked my car at one end of the trailheads at 10 a.m. I don't want to say exactly which one, but I do want to say that I've been hiking in this area constantly for the last 12 years. I know the area quite well, so I don't always stay on the trails. This is an area that doesn't have a lot of underbrush, and the trees are divided to where you can just take a walk off the trail easily, which I do quite often. So I walked through the campground, and there was quite a bit of snow on the ground, even though it was June 23rd. But this is at 7,000 feet. 
Nobody was in the campground yet, and I cut between two of the campsites, and I headed down to one of the lakes. As I walked between the trees, the snow was two to three feet deep in some spots, and I was stopping occasionally, just looking around at the beautiful trees and the landscape, and I noticed that there was a separation in the trees, like it was a road. And I remember thinking, why is that big separation in the trees? I don't remember it being like that. And why is the hill to my right looking so different? And why haven't I seen the lake yet? I should have been seeing the lake by now. It's less than a five minute walk to get to the lake from where I started. I didn't understand what was going on. I kept thinking I should be seeing the lake by now and that went through my head several times. I was very relieved when I finally saw an opening in the trees. I was thinking at last, okay, I'm finally at the lake. But when I walked out into the open area, I was at the edge of the wetlands, one mile east from where I started. Then I got super excited, saying to myself, oh wow, I just walked through a vortex or a portal or something like that. I retraced my steps on the same day in 2023, trying to bring about the same happening, but I couldn't recreate it. It only happened that one time, but it was quite the experience. My name is Kevin, and something really strange happened involving members of my family. I don't even know what to call it. I don't know if it's a paranormal thing or a glitch in the matrix story. And the only explanations that anybody in my family can come up with, well, they don't seem like reasonable explanations. My family lives in Pennsylvania, and we have several relatives that live in Maryland. My uncle in Maryland came home from work one day only to have to call the police to report that a 15-foot shark was laying across his driveway, completely blocking it. Then he had to get help in moving it out of there. My uncle lives about 160 miles from the nearest beach or shoreline. The most likely answer is that someone put it there. But who would drive that far with a shark and then put it in some random driveway? Well, that isn't the strangest part. The incident with my uncle happened in 1978. Well, in 1983, we woke up one morning and there was this really big shark laying across my family's driveway, completely blocking our way out. We measured the shark. It was over 12 feet long. Pennsylvania is not a coastal state. You would have to drive more than 300 miles to get to the nearest shore point. I've realized that it's completely possible that somebody went through a whole lot of trouble to prank two related families in two different states five years apart. But I have a hard time believing that anyone would do that. I just never believed that anyone would go through that much trouble for a joke. If a group of people did do this, we never did find out who they were. It's been more than 40 years since that day in 83. I have a feeling I may never figure it out. Nobody's ever believed me about this, but I swear it really happened. And this isn't the only strange thing that's ever happened to me, but as far as I can remember, it was the first. I was 14 years old and I was walking home from the bus stop after school. And as I was walking towards my house, I heard a voice from behind me. It sounded like someone asked me, where are you going? Well, I thought I was all alone, so I turned around quickly to see who was there, but nobody was there. Floating in the air though, were these rocks. And these rocks were about the size of a golf ball, maybe a bit smaller, and they were just hanging there, midair. And if that wasn't weird enough, these rocks were following me. When I saw that these floating rocks were following me, I started running. But somehow, the rocks kept up with me even as I ran. When I reached my house, they were just gone. I have no idea where they went, but they weren't behind me, floating in the air anymore. I was both terrified and astounded by what happened. But I thought people would say that I was lying, so I didn't tell anyone. What really started to freak me out was that the same exact thing happened the very next day also. The voice, nobody being there and the rocks following me. And this went on all week. 
After the fifth day, I was so freaked out that I finally went to my mom and told her what was happening. I told her that I didn't want to take the bus anymore. I didn't understand what it was, and I was really afraid. Both the number and the size of the rocks that followed behind me was always different, and of course I don't have any idea whether that meant anything or not. The voice behind me wasn't ever really clear. It was hard to be sure of what was being said, but on two days I was almost certain that it asked, where are you going? My mom never accused me of making anything up, but I'm sure she must have considered it. She did tell me that after the weekend, if it continued happening the following week, she would figure something out so that I wouldn't have to walk home from the bus stop after that. Well, when that following Monday came, I had anxiety all through the day, and when I was on the bus going home, I was so nervous about what was going to happen. I wondered if the same thing would happen again, or God forbid, what if something worse happened? And of course, every day since that started, I had questions of what was causing it, and I kept asking, why me? When I got off the bus and I was walking home, I didn't hear any voice that day, and there were no more rocks. I turned around several times to check, but there were no more rocks. It just stopped. I was very relieved, but in a way, it was really frustrating too. To have that happen for five days straight, and then just stop. I was left frightened and confused and without any answers at all. Throughout the rest of my life, I've had some other things happen to me, odd paranormal things. My mind always goes back to that week when the rocks followed me. That was the first experience I had. I can't help but wonder how and why those things occurred. Was it spirit activity? Or could it have been something else entirely? Last year for my birthday, my mom gave me the most beautiful set of earrings. These were the most beautiful one carat white gold earrings that I've ever seen. They were really high end. My mom spent over $2,500 on these. My family is not well to do in any way, so this was a big deal. I hadn't been expecting a gift at all, but if my mom did get me a gift, I certainly wouldn't expect her to spend more than about $25. I wanted her to return the earrings right away. They were far too expensive, and my mom could use that money for something much more important. But my mom insisted that I keep them, and that's when she told me her little secret. My grandfather passed away in 2019, and my mom had a bunch of boxes filled with grandpa's personal items. Well, my mom told me that when she was doing some cleaning and organizing, she finally went through these boxes. And that's when she found a huge box of coins inside one of the larger boxes. They appeared to be valuable, so she took them to a few coin dealers. Well, to make a long story short, she took the best offer, and she sold that box of coins for over $15,000. She wanted me to share in what my grandfather had left her, and she remembered that I talked about diamond earrings several times. These earrings were not only valuable, but now they had a really special meaning behind them. After wearing these earrings for only about six weeks, I got up for work one morning, and when I was getting ready, I noticed that one of them was missing. Well, I searched all over the house and ripped it apart. I ripped my car apart, too, yet I couldn't find it anywhere. I begged everybody that I knew to please keep an eye out for the missing earring, and I was just heartbroken. Well, here's where something happened that I just can't explain. It was about two weeks after the earring went missing. I woke up one morning for work, and the earring was suddenly back in my ear. If I'd found the missing earring lying on the floor or something like that, I'd be happy about it, and the whole thing would have been over and forgotten about. Except that's not what happened. The earrings, both of them, were in my ears. And when the first earring went missing, I put the other one in my jewelry box. So I can't explain how both earrings wound up back in my ears. How did the lost earring and the one that I put in my jewelry box wind up back in my ears while I was asleep? I can't help but wonder if my grandpa had something to do with it. Okay guys, that's it for tonight. I'll be back in a few days with more scary and strange experiences.